I'm going to teach you a little bit about event type properties of controls, and it's also going to teach you about navigate. All right, so let's talk about the event properties. So we've got a button selected here. We click on it. You'll notice all these different properties that we could change or interact with here on the side in this dropdown. The point they're trying to make here is that with all these properties, there are some of them that are actually events. And what they're saying is if there are event properties, there's there'll probably be prefix with the on prefix. So let's go down here and look for on. So there's one property that starts with on and it's on select. So I'm gonna click on that. We'll go up here and we can actually type something in here. Now what they want you to do is use a function here called navigate. Okay, and whenever you use a function uh, within Power Apps, you always want to use parentheses, and that's pretty standard in programming languages. If you call a function, you call a routine, you're going to use pr uh, parentheses because a lot of times you need to pass arguments or parameters into that function, and whatever is between the opening and closing parentheses is actually the argument or the parameter. So in this case, it wants us to pass in the name of a screen that we should navigate to. So use the navigate function to move from screen to screen. So in this case, it wants us to go to L05 for lesson 05 formulas. So let's type that, capital L. And now Power Apps is case sensitive, so if it actually wants you to type capital L, you should make that capital. If you don't make it capital, you can just keep typing 05. You'll see here that it actually gives you suggestions. A lot of times us programmers will call that IntelliSense. So in this case, if I were just to hit tab, it will select the topmost item. There you go. And you see it capitalized that L. So that's useful to know. So that's what they're looking for us to do. Now we could just run this, hit the button and move on to the next lesson. However, I like to show you something in addition to this that involves navigation. Let's add a new button here. So I'll click on insert, click on button, and I'll put this button right here beside the other one. All right, so this button right here, we can change a property for the text. Call this less than back. So I hit enter and you notice it does something that looks like a little like a back arrow. So that's why I did that. And you notice the next has two forward arrows or greater than symbols there. I mean, we could add another one in there to make it consistent with the other button. Okay, so we did that. So remember how to get to the on select property. We can either go here. We could we could go and type on. Boom, there's on select. Hit enter, and there's nothing there. So nothing's going to happen if I hold down Alt and click on this button. Nothing's going to happen. Again, a second way, clicking action on select. All right. So there's another function besides navigate that will make us go to a different screen, and that is the back function. So we type capital B A C K. Make sure we have the parentheses in there. So if I were to hold down my Alt key and click on that, that should take us back to the previous lesson screen. You see that? So I'm still holding down the Alt key. I'm gonna click Next, now we're here. And on this Next, we do have this Navigate function already in there. So I'm gonna hold down Alt again and move on to the next lesson. Did you know this is a part of a 20 part series which goes over all the basics of Power Apps? And if you liked this video, chances are you'll want to check out the other parts as well. Are you overwhelmed with Power Apps? Do you feel there's just so much to learn and you don't know where to start? Lucky for you, Darren has the solution. Discover how you can condense six months of Power App struggles in just 90 minutes. Click on the link below to learn more about Darren's Power Apps Deep Dive Masterclass.